morning everyone. In the last module, we have discussed on the gasification and we have come to know that in a gasifier, the syngas is produced and it exits from the gasifier at high temperature, say 6, 6, 600 to 500 to 600 degree centigrade temperature. So, that hot syngas, it is cleaned. So, particulate the stage 1, then for other stage 2 or acid gas, then clean syngas for different applications. So, for different downstream applications, we need to achieve certain quality of the syngas. It must be free from the all sort of impurities like acid gases etcetera and it will be having certain H2 by CO ratio as per the requirement except the electricity production. Electricity production does not need any requirement. So, this utilization part or sections of this, we should concentrate first on the cooling and clean up option. And another important point is that syngas here, the typical composition CO is 40 to 60 percent say and H2 it is a 20 to 30 percent, but here we need. So, H2 by C this ratio is almost half, but we need somewhere H2 by CO ratio 2 or in somewhere all hydrogen complete hydrogen. Therefore, we need to cool the syngas, we need to remove the impurities from it as well as we need to control the H2 by CO ratio. So, all those things we have to do first then we will go for different applications. So, in this module we will discuss on syngas utilization options, syngas cooling and conditioning that includes acid gas removal and shift reactions. Shift reactions will increase the hydrogen concentration in the syngas and reduce CO concentration in the syngas. And then we will discuss on the processes for the production of some chemicals or some other utilities like say Mm, production of electricity etcetera. Here we can see that from syngas we can get hydrogen, we can get electricity, we can get SNG, we can get FT fuels that is diesel, petrol and other FT fuels and we can get methanol and many chemicals. Once we can get the methanol that can be converted to DME that can be converted to many other chemicals as some of the chemicals are mentioned here like ethylene, propylene, polyolefin, oxy, oxo chemicals, methyl acetate, acetic anhydride etcetera etc., all the some list are given here. So, we can utilize syngas in different routes. We will be discussing some important routes here like say electricity, SNG, hydrogen, FT and methanol synthesis and DME synthesis. So, we have come to know that we need to clean the syngas and cool the syngas. So, cooling can be done by, di di by, by direct quenching it or by indirect cooling. Any methods can be used, direct quench helps to remove the particulates also. The once the syngas is cooled, then the part comes for clean up. So, that for the clean up means the removal of undesirable impurities. Obviously, the acid gases COAs, H2As etcetera, there is no NOx in this case, it will be nitrogen because we have supplied controlled amount of oxygen. There will be no SOx also because we have supplied uh, controlled amount of oxygen. So, if sulphur present in the feedstocks, it will be available in H2As. So, our major concern H2As, COAs and CO2. So, these three are major concerns we have to remove it, but if chlorine is present in case of 
uh, your feedstocks then that is another addition will be HCl or chloride. Now this flow sheet says that at first the syngas, raw syngas containing different compositions and some other trace contaminants as mentioned here. The first step is hydrolysis of COS. So, COS will be converted to H2S by hydrolysis. It will give us H2S. So, plus CO2, H2S plus CO2. Then second step is to remove H2S and CO2 from the shin gas and that is acid gas removal unit. This acid gas removal unit gives us clean shin gas, gas as well as it H2S rich gas and CO2 rich gas. So, CO2 rich gas we can uh, pressurize it and we can use as the source of carbon dioxide or we can sequester it. There are number of methods for carbon dioxide sequestration and for H2S gas which is engaged with H2S that is used for sulphur recovery. There are number of methods for sulphur recovery we will discuss now and after recovering the sulphur from the H2S rich syn gas the tail gas is, go, is going for treatment. So, this is the acid gas treatment process and for the removal of H2S and CO2 there are number of technologies available and most of the commercial technologies are based on the absorption process and the recent trend is to develop adsorption process or warm gasification. Now, if we see on the flow sheet then it is clear to us this is 500 to 600 degree centigrade. Now, it is again say most of the cases say 250 to 300 degree centigrade is required. So, cooling if we can treat this hot gas at warm condition then it will be more economically feasible. But in conventional cleaning stages for H2S and CO2 separation for H2S and CO2 separation the conventional cleaning, cleaning processes uses absorption based technology, absorption based technology which are both chemical and physical absorption in nature. So, the temperature of the gas used in these systems either atmosphere, atmospheric temperature around 30 to 35 degree centigrade or it may be below 0 degree centigrade up to minus 70, minus 60 degree centigrade is used. So, if we use conventional absorption process, so obviously we have to reduce the temperature here below atmospheric temperature, again we have to increase the temperature here to 250 to 300 degree centigrade say for particular application. So, once temperature down again it is increasing, so these thermal processes will, will reduce the overall efficiency of the process. But in, in place of this, if one process is available or can be developed which can separate H2S and CO2 at warm condition that is warm uh, clean process based on adsorption that can be more economically feasible and attractive. But this is lat latest development and very few commercial plants are available on this technology. The most of the old commercial plants are based on the absorption technology and there are basically three major absorbents has been reported and used commercially those are MDEA that is methyl diethanolamine selexol that is primarily dimethyl ethers of polyethylene glycol and rectisol that is refrigerated methanol. So, this refrigerated methanol, rectisol and selexol these two absorbents captures these H2S and CO2 by physical absorption, whereas MDEA captures these impurities from the syn gas through chemical absorption. Due to this reason, the temperature for this MDEA, pro MDEA process is around atmospheric temperature, whereas for these two selexol and rectisol the temperature is below 0 degree centigrade. So, obviously the cost is higher in case of rectisol and selexol process, but obviously there will be some 
uh, advantage of this ectisol process also, it will be giving more selectivity and more efficiency for separation. Now, we will compare these three syn gas, uh, acid gas methods that is MDEA, Slexol and Rectisol. So, MDEA that is 30 to 35 degree centigrade and temperature is same uh, to 30 to 35 and pressure is 2.94 that is around 30 bar around 30 bar and it gives 98.99 percentage of 98 to 99 percent of, of H2S selectivity and removal. So, H2S removal H2S removal is around 98 to 99 percent and CO2 removal is around less than equal to 30 percent. So, up to 30 percent CO2 removal is possible using this chemical absorption method. And this is developed by Union Carbide, UOP Cell, Dow Chemicals, all those licensors are using this in their plant. And this is low capital cost and selection process, this is also having temperature is less than 0, minus 4 to minus 7 degree centigrade and pressure is also similar say this is around uh, 68 or around 68 8 bar and then here H 2 S removal is again 90, 99 percent and carbon dioxide removal can vary. So, 99 percent H 2 S removal carbon dioxide can vary. For rectisol methods this temperature is up to minus 60 degree minus 35 to minus 35 to minus 60 degree centigrade. So, very low temperature at this temperature the H 2 S capture capacity is very high for this uh, absorbent and CO 2 is also captured almost completely. So, 99.5 this is having 99.5 to 99.9 percent H 2 S removal and C O 2 removal is also around 99 percent 98.5 percent. So, 98.5 percent. So, on efficiency wise the rectisol is the superior one that is why in spite of higher cost the rectisol has been used in commercial plant. MDA has also been used in commercial plant because of its low cost, but selexol is less used with comparison to these two. Here the technology licenses are given, the rectisols is developed by Linde AZ and the important features we have discussed. Now we will see the mechanism of syngas clean up at hot conditions or warm clean up of the syngas. At high temperature, if we use some metal oxides, then H 2 S is converted to that metal ox, uh, metal sulphide and steam. If we further increase the temperature, then the regeneration occurs. So, sulphide is converted to metal oxide again. So, for example, if we use ZNO plus H 2 S, then it will give us Z N S plus H 2 O at high temperature that is around say 500, 315 to 530. So, 315 to 530 degree centigrade. So, this reaction takes place. Further, Z N S is heated, Z N S is heated, and then it gives us this is it, it gives us in presence of oxygen. ZNO plus SO2, ZNO plus SO2. This temperature is 590 to 680, 590 to 680 degree centigrade. Now, once SO2 is produced, which is coming out from the, the adsorbed materials, so that will be having high concentration of SO2, so that SO2 can be used for further applications. Like say, SO2 
can be used directly for the production of sulfuric acid because SO2 will be converted to SO3 by vanadium pentoxide B2O5. Then it will give SO3, SO3 to concentrated H2SO4, it will give oleum, feed dilution, it will give concentrated H2SO4. So, that way we can get sulfuric acid from this or we can uh, we can recover sulfur directly that is the reaction is like this SO2, SO2 we have that will be reacting with hydrogen and it will give us 1 by N S N that is elemental sulfur and H 2 O or this SO 2 can react with CO, SO 2 can react with CO and it can gives us 1 by N S N plus CO 2. So, that way directly we can recover the sulfur or clause process is also there for the sulfur recovery. For solvent uh, for absorption method also re using rectisol, selexols or MDEA when it is regenerated the or uh, desorption proceeds then the H2S comes out. So, that H2S can further be used for sulphur recovery through clause process. Now, we will see the reactions involved in clause process. In this clause process H2S partially reacts with oxygen and forms SO2 and H2O. Then SO2 and H2O, H2S, SO2 and H2S, this reacts in presence of some catalyst Fe2O3 or Al2O3, Fe2O3 or Al2O3 and it gives us 3 by 8 S8 plus 2 H2O. This is or H2S can also react with oxygen and directly it can gives 3 by 8 S8 plus 3 H2O. So, this elemental sulfur is generated and that can be produced, can be processed for different production. Okay. Now, we will concentrate on the conditioning part that means, how to increase the hydrogen concentrations in the syngas and reduce CO concentration in the syngas. For this, shift reaction is carried into the um, shift reactor. So, shift reactor we see it can be placed here before acid gas removal or it can be placed after acid gas removal. So, this syngas conditioning or shift gas reactors can be shift reactors can be placed before or after the acid gas removal. If we place in different positions, then we will be having different phenomena particularly here the temperature is higher, temperature is lower because the syngas after cleaning the temperature will be lower, but this shift reactors will be having or requiring certain temperature. This shift reactor will also be requiring certain temperature. So, when we will be using after sweet shift reactor and sour shift reactor before this uh, acid gas removal, this will be having different efficiency. And as here the syngas is containing more impurities, the catalyst will also be different. So, now we have got two types of shift reactions or reactors. So, one is your high temperature shift reaction, another is low temperature re shift reaction. So, shift reaction temperature may be of high temperature and low temperature. So, high temperature means say 320 to 450 degree centigrade and low temperature means say 200 to 250 degree centigrade. So, these two reactors under these two conditions two different catalyst have been used. So, 
high temperature catalyst is basically Fe2O3, Cr2O3 and Fe3O4. In this case, low temperature that is your Cu, ZnO, Al2O3. So, these are two catalysts has been used. Now, development in the catalyst section, catalyst side has given another catalyst which can be used for a wider range that is cobalt molybdenum. Al2O3 catalyst. Now, if we think about these two catalysts, there are some differences. This Fe2O3, Cr2O3, this catalyst typically has a relatively less selectivity that Cu, ZnO, Al2O3 has higher selectivity for hydrogen productions. However, this has lower resistance to sulfur and chloride impurities. Now, to achieve the conditioning of the syngas, we may use the sweet shift reactions or we may use short shift reactions, but whatever reactions we use, we need to follow both high temperature and low temperature shift reactions. In case of sweet shift reaction, typical two high temperature shift reactors and one low temperature shift reactors are used and this say 44 percent of CO can be reduced to around 2 percent or 1 percent around say 2 percent or 1 to 2 percent by two high temperature shift reaction. And when we want to get less than 1 percent of CO then another LTS is required. So, we can get up to around 44 percent to 0 0.5 percent. The similar thing we can get here using short shift reactions also, but in this case more steam is required. So, the catalyst which is used in case of sweet shift reactor that are more costly, but, but high efficiency. So, reactor volume is less in this case, but for sore shift reaction the catalyst are less uh, cheaper relatively, but it uh, the reactor size is bigger. So, bigger reactor size. So, this is the difference between the, the sweet shift and sore shift reactor. Here some typical example is given how the quality of the syngas changes after shift gas react reactions. So, the basic reactions is CO plus H2O it will give your H2 plus CO2. So, this is the basic reaction. Now, in this in this reaction hydrogen is increasing. So, here hydrogen you see hydrogen is increasing from um, 43.01 to 61.53 and CO is reducing 49.98 to 1.18. CO2 is also increasing because CO2 is increasing, but H2O we are not getting much change because we also need some additional steam, but here it is not changing because when the syngas is taken for the analysis, then that during analysis temperature reduced and H2 is condensed that is why this value is not changing much. Now, we will discuss on Fischer trough synthesis. So, in case of Fischer trough synthesis CO and H2 containing syn gas the ratio having H2 by CO is equal to 2. So, this syn gas is reacted in a FT reactor where syngas is converted to wax and that wax is further processed through hydrocracker and then it is after distillation we get different fractions naphtha, kerosene, distillates and the lower part of it the waxy raffinate it is recycled for hydrocracker. And the light fractions which is generated in FT reactors 
that goes and after condensation it gives light wax and light oil which is processed with this wax part through the hydrocracker to produce the light refractions which is fractionated in distillation column. So, this is the flow sheet of the fischer trough synthesis and this reactor part play a significant role. The basic reactions which take place in this are CO plus 2 H 2 that gives us C H 2 N C H 2 N. So, we get paraffin and we get olefins basically the paraffins are wax. So, N C O plus 2 N plus 1 H 2 will give us C N H 2 N plus 2 plus N H 2 O. This is for paraffins and N C O will react with 2 N H 2 and it will give us N C N H 2 N plus N H 2 O. So, this is your olefin and this is your paraffin. And shift reactions also takes place in this reactor. So, the fischer trough synthesis the reactor temperature may be high and low. So, high temperature means 325 to 370 degree centigrade, low temperature means 220 to 270 degree centigrade and the catalyst either may be Fe based, iron based or cobalt based. So, iron based catalyst is uh, fuel flexibility is there and cobalt based catalyst is not so flexible with fuel, but it is better to use syngas with high H 2 C O ratio and it is basically used for the syngas produced from natural gas. And JSM 5 supported bimetallic F T catalyst has also been developed in later stage. In this case the gas hourly space velocity is maintained around 700 per hour and pressure is 15 to 30 bar. Under these conditions only the variations of the high temperature and low temperature the product distribution will change. So, you see here the C plus for high temperature the C plus fraction is 50 to 8 percent whether the wax, wax fraction is less only 4 percent, but it is low temperature FT synthesis we will get higher wax that is equal to 50 percent around and we will get C plus fractions less 20 to 30 percent and the gasoline will be more in case of high temperature FT synthesis reactors that is 2 is to 1 gas, gasoline is to diesel ratio and when the low temperature is used the gasoline is to diesel ratio is 1 is to 2 and Cetan number also varies in these two cases. Next we will see some applications of this gas uh, uh, syn gas into different purposes. So, Sassel plant at South Africa natural gas based plant it is uh, in, in 1990 it is established and for all these are for FT synthesis. So, another is Mosgas plant, South Africa, Bintulu plant, Malaysia, GTL plant at Australia, Pearl GTL project, Qatar and Sanijaru refinery Italy. So, here one interesting information we get that all the plants are having very large capacity. So, 12,000 barrel per day. 10,000 barrel per day, 1 lakhs 40,000 barrel, barrel per day. But this technology will not be suitable for the case of the uh, for the case of biomass and waste gasification. The syn gas which is produced from biomass and waste, the capacity is not much. The plant capacity is less, but here the plant capacity is very bigger. So, biomass and waste gasification and corresponding utilization of syngas to FT synthesis will be feasible only when we will be getting more compact reactors with higher efficiency and heat transfer and efforts are going on and in near future we will get more compact reactors and the scenario will be changed and biomass the syngas from biomass and waste will also be suitable for FT synthesis. So, after this in this module Thank you very much for your patience.